Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything that I've learned the past couple of years about feline leukemia and how to best help your cats if he or she gets a diagnosis of feline leukemia. Now, as you all, if you all have been following me, my cat Chirpy recently passed on March 25th from complications of feline leukemia. Um, the thing is, he had a false test as a negative. When he was about three, four months old, he had a false negative test. Um, but after his siblings from the same litter started coming down with feline leukemia, I decided to have him retested. And, um, excuse me, I had to check on something. But um, I had him retested at about the age of eight to nine months, and then he tested positive. And basically, the vet who did the test was no help at all. She just basically had this attitude that, um, well, there's no help for those type of cats. You just take them home and like wait for them to die. That was her whole attitude towards cats who had feline leukemia. So she was no help. So I did some research and realized that it was in the same family as viruses that cause HIV and AIDS. So I figured that maybe one of those antiretroviral drugs would work. So I was able to get my hands on a medicine called Lamivir and I uh, dosed it to Chirpy according to his um, weight. I scaled down the adult dose according to the adult human dose, according to his weight. And he was on that for a while. Um, it's, it wasn't ideal, but being that the rest of his siblings died at younger than one year of age, he was in good health for two and a half, three years. So I did something right. And I was on the right path, but I didn't know all that I know now. And the main reason that I started using the Lamivir was because the, the vet was no help. So I had to take matters to my own hands because I wasn't going to let my cat just sit there and die. Uh, in late 2019, Chirpy began to develop like lumps, like on his back and by his hind leg. And then he started getting these weird colds and he wasn't eating. He got skinny. He was starting to waste away. And, um, he like lost the use of his back legs. And, um, um, it was just one thing after another. He wasn't able to groom himself anymore. He wasn't able to jump up. It was just, he just kept declining. It was one thing after another. And another vet that I was going to was prescribing antibiotics, appetite stimulants, and um, trying to help him, but he still, in the end, he died on March 25th in the evening. Um, I dealt with a place called Pet Cremation Services of Tidewater, and they were able to cremate him for me and to give me something to remember him by. I will have their information in the description box below. Here's the bag. Here's um, the beautiful little container with Chirpy's name on it that contains his ashes. I was also given his paw print inside of this little container with a copy of the Rainbow Bridge poem. And I was also given some of his hair clippings. So, yeah, you might think it's weird, but... I needed something of his body that he inhabited for almost four years with me. So here are his hair clippings. And um, for those of you who know me, I did talk about, I had a vision of Sherby about three days after he passed away. But I won't get into that in this video. That's beyond the scope of this video. This video is trying to, not dealing with the afterlife, this video is trying to deal with the here and now and try to help people with feline leukemia. So. I'm gonna get on with it. Here's what I've learned. If you have a cat with feline leukemia, leukemia, you have to you have to really monitor it. You have to stay up on it with a proper blood test or if you cannot afford a saliva test. I agree, I believe that they should be have they should have these blood tests every six months. Or if you cannot afford the blood test, the saliva test every six months. The blood tests are to monitor how the medicine you're doing is working how the medicine you're doing is suppressing the viral load. Um, in December 2019, I decided to test Sherpy again to see whether the Lamivir had helped him beat the virus. So I contacted a company called catdx.com and I will have their information in the description box below. And their test is like $19, which is a lot cheaper than the blood test. And on that test, he tested, still tested positive, not only positive, but strongly positive. And at the time I was like, oh, these, this test is not accurate. This is just some sort of internet 
stuff is not accurate because I didn't want to accept the fact that the lamb here had, while it had extended his life, it did not really clear the virus. I didn't want to accept that. So I was like, oh, these results aren't right. But later, a few months later, he died from complications of feline leukemia. So these tests were indeed accurate. I just didn't want to see that. So I do recommend the Cat DX saliva test if you cannot afford or get a hold of the blood test at your vet. So the, these animals really need to be monitored at least every six months. I did not do that because I had given up on vets, and that was that was a mistake of mine. So, like I said, don't give up on vets. Find one that will monitor the cat, even if they don't 100% believe in what you're doing. What I mean by that is even if the person kind of believes you're nuts for doing all this for your cat and kind of believes that these, these um, treatments are quackery and won't work, even if the vet does believe that, if the vet is still willing to order them for you, still willing to work with you, then stick with that vet. Find a vet who is willing to monitor your cat and a vet who is willing to go along with what you want to do with, with regards to your pet, with the, who is just not willing to give up and say, go home and die. If you hear anything, is um, Chirpy's little brother, Sylvester, chewing on stuff. So I swear he was a dog in another, another life. Okay, here are treatments for feline leukemia. Uh, the first one I read about was AZT. And um, I have some studies linked in the description box below. It is a human, it is a, um, a human HIV anti-AIDS drug. And I put the studies on it being used in cats with feline leukemia in the description box below. And of course, this will be an off-label treatment. And um, your vet, I suppose you can get it from your vet um, if you're, Funds are low and you can't really get to a vet or whatever, or you can also get it from all-day chemist or in-house pharmacy. Now, whether you want to do that or not, that's kind of in the gray area of things. If you want to do that or not, that's up to you. But if you can't afford the vet and your cat is dying and you have to do what you have to do. So you make the choice about whether you want to do this or not. But if your vet is not willing to just prescribe this for you, you make the choice about what you're going to do to get the drug or whether you're just going to try another method. Another HIV anti-AIDS drug that has been useful for cats with feline leukemia is, forgive me if I don't pronounce this right, it is Raltigravir and is written in the prescription, excuse me, written in the description box below. Of course there are studies for it being used with cats with feline leukemia and feline AIDS. So, and there's also another antiviral medicine called Virbagen Omega. And it is a, an immune modulator and is a drug licensed for use in Europe, Australia, and some Asian countries. So if you're in one of those countries and you're watching this, you probably will be able to get your hands on the Virbagen Omega, spelled V-I-R-B-A-G-I-G-E-N Omega, M-O-M-E-G-A. So that is an option if you live in one of those countries. Another medicine is teno, tenofovir, and there are several studies done on this. It's again a human anti-HIV drug, and there are several studies done on this, and it can be used as an off-label treatment for animals with feline leukemia. So that's another thing to think about. The next medicine is an injection, and this seems to be the most promising to me. It is called T-site, and these injections are basically, these are not something that you can get from all the chemist or any of these other places, okay? This is something that has pretty much been gotten by a vet. The vet buys it and he or she will administer it. I have also heard on Facebook about people administering the um, shots to their cat at home once the vet actually orders the medication, but I don't know. I would be more comfortable having the vet administer it because I don't like needles. So this is what I recommend to you. Go to www.tsite.com or you can call 1-800-483-2104, extension 88, and talk to them about getting getting this medicine for your cat. Um, they do have a thing on their website whereby they can put you in contact with vets who are in your area who already use it. But if you check the website and there are no vets in your area who already use it, you can probably try to get your vet on board with them by giving them your vet information and vice versa, and you can set something up and your vet can start ordering it from this company and giving your cat the shots excuse me, giving your cat the shots. And if you feel comfortable enough to, you can start giving the cat the shots on your own, but your vet has to order it for you. 
Another product is Transfer Factor Plus Tri-Factor, and this is a, a supplement that you don't have, it's not prescription, it's a supplement that you can buy without worrying about any legal repercussions or anything like that. And um, there are some reviews for it online, on the Facebook group I'm a part of, Feline Leukemia Cats. And there's some reviews on, online for it, and um, about 70% of the reviews are good, and 30% of them are so-so. But here's the thing, even if you're a human or in chemotherapy or something, no drug is going to work all the time, 100% on everybody. So that's just how it is, even with drugs, let alone supplements. So I believe it is worth a try. The Transfer Factor Plus Tri-Factor can be gotten online from direct from the company, which is called For Life, for the, um, the number four, Life. Or you can get it from Amazon. If your cat is showing symptoms already of the problem, you give them one capsule in the morning and evening with their food. You just open up the capsule and mix it with their food. And wet food is best anyway. If your cat has tested positive for feline leukemia and is not really having symptoms, you just give them a half a capsule in the morning and night. So this is pretty easy. And um, wet food is best for cats anyway, so just mix it into their wet food. And again, this is Transfer Factor Plus Tri Factor. It has to be this type because it really boosts the immune system. And here is a, okay, here is one more medicine that I've heard of, and it is Retromad 1, spelled R-E-T-R-O-M-A-D, 1, the number 1, and it's by a company called Biovalence in Malaysia. And if you're in one of those Asian countries, you'll probably be able to get your hand on this. And even if you're not, I'm sure that you probably could get your hands on it if you contact the company. I have put the company's information in the description box below so that you can contact the company and see if you would like to try this medicine or not. So let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've basically given you seven options on treating your feline leukemia positive cat. If you have any problems or questions or concerns, please put them in put them in the comments box below and I'll try to answer them. If I don't know the answer, I'll do some research to get back to you. What I give you a lot of options, but what you do depends on basically how much money you have and what you can financially afford and also what you can get in your country and also how far you're willing to go with your cat. Uh, as far as using in-house pharmacy and all-day chemist, um, that's kind of, I'm going to be honest with you, that's kind of like in the gray area. Uh, I know a lot of people who do order all-day chemist from all day chemists for their retin-A and stuff like that, and they had no problem with all day chemists with that, and that's kind of like in the gray area. Um, if you don't want to do this, then don't feel obligated to do it, but if your funds are short and you have trouble getting a veterinarian who's on your page as far as ordering these medicines, you may have to order something from all day chemist or in-house pharmacy in order to save your cat's life until you're able to do better and get to a vet and monitor like him and her like she's supposed to be monitored. So you have to make that call. You have to make that call. It's up to you. Like I said, it's um, how far you're willing to go, what your level of comfort is, how much money you have, and where what country you're located in. All this depends upon what you will do for your cat. So um, doing what I did with the Lamivir, his life was extended, but it wasn't, you know, if, if I had had all the information that I have now from all these Facebook groups and for all of my um research over the months and years. If I had all the information I had now, Chirpy would probably still be with us. But even with what I did know, the rudimentary medicines that I did have him on, he lived almost four years while all of his siblings died at one year or younger. So I did do something right. So hopefully the things that I've learned are, will be helpful to you. And I hope that you all are doing as well as possible under the current situation. So have a great day. Bye-bye.